Governor Haley. Governor Haley, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first this morning, I think I want to start with, with that soundbite. You said the loudest voices in the room. Was that comment directed at Donald Trump? Partially him, but a lot of people. You know, a lot of what I was talking about was we've seen across our country, if you look at places like Ferguson and Baltimore, we are seeing that people feel like they have to be loud. They have to be angry to get their voices heard. And, you know, look to the example of South Carolina. When we had the shooting of Walter Scott, you know, it was a time where we could have had that. But instead, we got together and two months to the day passed the first body camera bill in the country. You know, and that was Republicans and Democrats, blacks and whites that came together. And we didn't have all that. So, um, yes, partially to Donald Trump, but partially to a lot of other people is reminding them we get more done when we listen and find out where someone else is coming from and put ourselves in their shoes to try and figure out where we can find common ground. And last night, Governor, the president said that one of the few regrets of his presidency is that, quote, the rancor and suspicion between parties has gotten worse instead of better. You also addressed the division in Washington, saying that there is more than enough blame to go around, that your party needs to recognize its own contributions in the erosion of public trust and so on and in America's leadership. Is it possible to repair, you believe, that divide that we see in Washington? And if so, how? Absolutely we can. We've done it before. We need to do it again. I think first, you know, we have to look in the mirror. I mean, President Obama has been very divisive for our country. I mean, we've seen him divide the country in a lot of ways. We have to make sure we're not a part of that. So we need to look in the mirror. We need to look at how we've been spending. We need to look at our debt. We need to look at how we're handling um, national security and all those things and say, okay, we're going to be a positive role in this. We're going to start to move forward and get out of all the political rhetoric. There's too much of that. If we're really going to do something, we need to show action, not words. Yeah. And you said that your party is, is responsible for its own share. How so? What do you mean? Well, you know, I think that we've got Republicans who want their pork projects as much as we have Democrats. I think we've got Republicans who've increased our debt just like we've seen Democrats. I think we see Republicans who are not always being responsible with their words in terms of, you know, extending our tent, making sure that people who uh, abide by our laws and abide by our traditions feel accepted in this country. And so I think it's important for Republicans to really understand we have to really look at the responsibility that we have and what we want to do to keep this country the greatest, freest country in the world. And that just means making sure that everyone feels welcome. One more note on the divide in Washington, because you were, you were criticized by conservatives, the conservative right overnight. Ann Coulter said mm -hmm. that Donald Trump should deport you. Jeb Bush and former Obama advisor uh, David Axelrod and Van Jones, they praised you. How concerned are you about this divide in Washington and then again fixing it? I know that you said that you believe that it can be, but how concerned are you about it? I am concerned. I mean, first of all, I'm very thankful that Speaker Ryan and Senator McConnell let me give a speech I wanted to give. Let me um, have the opportunity to talk to the country. And, you know, what I want them to do is look at the example of South Carolina. Look at how we came together with Walter Scott. Look at how we came together with the Confederate flag issue. Look at how we came together with the Thousand Year Flood. Mm -hmm. It can be done. We've proven it. But it takes everyone to get their egos out the room and really sit down and say, okay, how are we going to get to a solution? And that's something that we're not seeing in D.C. right now. And it's something that I hope we can get to so that we can start moving our country forward. I would imagine the leaders of the party did review your speech last night before you gave it, correct? They did. They did. They did, yes. And they approved it. And Paul Ryan, and I, don't, I don't know if we have video of Paul Ryan, but there were people who, um, you know, made some fun of Paul Ryan because he seemed to be the guy who was upset the most in the room, uh, didn't do a lot of applause uh, in the room. What do you make of his reactions? Were you watching him, and do you think that's indicative of how Republicans feel about the president? So I didn't watch him, but what I can tell you about Speaker Ryan is he is really trying to right the ship in terms of the Republican Party and in terms of the leadership in his house. He realizes we have to talk about issues we haven't talked about. He was just in South Carolina doing a poverty forum, trying to figure out how we give opportunities to citizens, how we lift them up. It's a really good um, change in what we're seeing in the leadership in the Republican Party and the way he's guiding. And he's basically saying we have to talk about things we haven't talked about. We've got to come together and really be the party of solutions. And we've got to make sure we put it into action. And, you know, look, you can't, uh, for us, for, as Republicans, it's hard for us not to see what President Obama has done 
you know, with health care. It's hard for us to see on the regulations and the overreach of executive mm -hmm. orders. It's hard for us not to see what he's done in terms of the um, our national safety. All of those things, it's hard to stomach because we see also how he's divided the country. And yeah. so this is something where both parties need to realize um, there are no saints here, but there's opportunities where we can say, okay, let's right the ship you and said, then start moving forward. You said that, that. Your, your comments last night, your response directed at members of your own party, including Donald Trump. So if he is a nominee and it's looking like it could be, he could be, do you think that he would pick you as a running mate after some of the parts of your speech seem to be aimed directly at him? Oh, I mean, those aren't things that I think about, Don. Truly, I, you know, we've had a rough 2015. We started our legislative session. Today we've got our budget rollout on Friday. I've got my state of the state on Wednesday. Those just aren't things that um, that I'm concerned about or that I think about. What I want is for all of our candidates to make sure that we have the best message we can, that we bring in the most people that we can, and that we lead with solutions. And I hope that for all of the candidates. I want to see every candidate start to really be um, solution-oriented and inclusive in the way that we can. So, you know, my voice to them was really just, you know, remember the responsibility we have in our words. Remember the responsibility and requirements that we have in our actions. And let's move forward that way. I have got to go, but you, would you consider a vice presidency? I, I truly haven't thought about it near as much as you guys have. <laughs> um, you know, I've got a, a daughter that's a senior in high school. I've got a son in middle school, so I'm busy with basketball games and, and running the state. I've, I've said if any time someone wants to sit down, I'm happy to sit down with a candidate. But really, my life is full. Everything's pretty full right now, and we've got a lot to do in the state of South Carolina, and I look forward to doing that. Well, we shall see within a few months. Thank you, Governor Haley. I appreciate you joining us here on New Day. Thank you, Don. It's always good to be with you.